Hey everybody, Steve Chase here. I'm going to share with you how to create some sales reports using a SKU number inside of Excel working with Power Query. So here is our example data that we're going to work with and we just have three columns, a date, a bank memo of text, and a dollar amount. The important thing to see here are the different SKU IDs and there are three of them. And what we're going to do is set up a model where Power Query will pull out the text right after the, the dash there. So and it's going to come in in three different groups here. We're expecting this report to share where 300 is the highest volume of sales by a landslide. And um, that will be the case. We also are going to have more data populated in the future. So it's important that we can save the Power Query and hit refresh. So that way our reports are just a couple of buttons away from clicking on loading the data, get new data, new records coming into Excel, saving, refreshing, and then updating our pivot table. Um, so that's what we have for this lesson. I'm excited to share with you. Let's jump in. All right, so here's our sample data. We're going to turn this into a table. We have the SKU data. This is already a table. I'll share with you that it is SKU table here. And this will be our new data. OK, so step one, create a table in the, in the raw data source here. And now we have our table. We just need to give it a name, so I'll just call it um, raw data. Okay, so now that we've got our table, um, we're able to then try to extract this right here. Uh, so what's going to happen here is we're going to try to have Power Query look for a dash and give us all the text after that up to the first uh, uh, space bar there. Okay, so let's check it out and see how how easy it is. And the first step we do is we got to get this into Power Query. So we're gonna go to Data tab, and we're gonna click here, Get Data from Table Range. This will load Power Query as an additional window. All right, I'm gonna gonna just slide this over here. Okay. And the first thing I'll do is I'll select the bank memo text. I'll go to the add column and I'm going to click columns from example. It gives us this ability to enter in the pattern that we're looking for. So if I just type 100 here, um, that nailed it beautifully right there. I hit OK. And here's the code that it just generated here. Added column text between delimiters at each instance of text where it's looking for a dash right here. And it's looking for a space <laughs> right there. It, it, it's just so cool. You don't even have to know what it did other than it worked. If you had any troubles, you click the gear here. And we'll see uh, basically just go at it. That's a space here. It's a dash, start of the input. I'm, I'm happy it worked. All we need to do now is right click and rename that value there and just call it SKU. And we'll keep it as, as text there. OK, so Power Query can be, um, we, can, we can see that we have our source is coming in from raw data. Sometimes your source will come from a CSV file or another database. Then we can see that it uh, converted the formats here. I don't think that we really need uh, date and time. So if I were just to click on this and change it to just date only, OK, we can uh, add new step. There we go. So it's just. Uh, date text here 
Ah, uh, but you know what? Ah, rats. I should have uh, moved this further. I'm going to close that out here. Yep. It should have uh, came in here and then did it. Date time. There we go. So just it goes in order. It's recording all the steps in order here. So this is looking good here. Um, all right. And I'll send it back over to close and load. It's going to create a new worksheet. Okay. You can see that we have a new worksheet called raw data right here. This is the source data here. It's our Power Query here. How we can quickly tell if there's a query connection, there's a query tab selected here. And you have a Power Queries here that will show you uh, the last time it was refreshed, 11.03 AM. OK. So now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to apply an X lookup. OK. So I'm going to go over here to column E and just put down the product category. And let's take a quick peek at the SKU. OK, this is this is our table here. So we're going to do the X lookup and that is equals X lookup. It's pretty awesome formula. You may are maybe used to using VLOOKUP. The X lookup is a little bit more superior uh, because it, it's just simply like this. OK, what are you looking up? We're looking up the SKU. OK. Then it's going to next arguments. Where's our lookup array? So our, our lookup array, it will be in the SKU table. It'll be this right here, comma. And then where is our return array? This is our return array. Beautiful thing about that is um, if the ta table grows and I add another SKU, it's going to it's going to be dynamic. It's going to connect that. So that's all we need here. Getting an error. Um, there must be a reason why. Uh, it's probably because of text and number so association here. So if I had to guess, that is why. So OK. Um, So let's go into the raw data query. I'm going to convert this to a number. Yeah. OK, close and load. OK, so that did it. That that's a little wonky there, I get. Um, probably another better method would have been to ensure that the of the sample data that comes in as text. But um, in any case, you have to kind of work with that little bit of a workaround for some scenarios where it got a little tripped up on number versus text and all that. But Okay, marching forward, guys, we, we got that to work. Now we are able to do a report to show which product categories were the most um, sales. Okay, so I'm just going to go up to my table design. Again, I'm on the query. I'm going to click right here, summarize with pivot table. I'll put this in a new worksheet. And on my worksheet, I'm going to want to bring in the product category and the amount. All right, so here we have the scenarios. OK, I'm going to right click, do a quick number format, just do like a currency or counting, zero decimals. All right, so as we thought, one of our projects would, are the, the top leader there. For that, if I wanted to bring in the SKU instead, I could definitely do that here. Just bring that over here instead of the category here. So that that would have worked too as well. It's 
I don't need to skew it there. Okay. But I, I do like having the product category. It's really the same. Okay. Sweet. Okay. So, you know, you save your model. That is it. Then, of course, you get new data. So tomorrow new data comes in. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's pay attention to um, the $312,000 is going to go up. So I go back to the sample data. I come down here and paste. Okay, so that's been pasted. Then I'm going to go, I need to refresh this here. So I need to go in um, and refresh this scenario here. So I can just right click refresh. Okay, boom. Three just came in instantly. Now my pivot table here. You know, this could be my dashboard, right? I still need to refresh that. So I need to right click refresh that and <laughs> just awesome. Just awesome. The other opportunity that we would have is to click on the data tab and hit refresh all as well. So alternatively, you might want to add just for kicks, you just might want to add another like for a chart. So on the Pivot table analyze, we have a pivot chart. And this could be, uh, you know, possibly really helpful there to work with. Oops. And to make it a little bit nice, what if a manager wants to see this month compared to last month, right? We can definitely do that. We can insert a timeline on the date field and this is great so let's say March versus April that's really amazing information so the way you can you can even drill down to days even so if I wanted to see March uh, I, let's let me get a date that I know we had something on. I know we had something on April 14th. Yes. Then here's April 15th. Yeah. And so this is, this is really powerful. Once you're, you could also do years, you know, and do 2022 and then this this is a, just a powerful slicer here that you've got connection on that so to reiterate what we started off with we start off with the sample data we were able to use power query to easily pull out these numbers here in the middle based on the text between delimiters we connected that to the query here where we did an offset x lookup on that once we did that, we then created a pivot table dashboard. And this pivot table dashboard right here gives us the control to uh, show charts and information related to what you're seeing inside this project here. So thank you guys for watching and um, hope you enjoyed this video here. Leave a comment in the video if there's something that you have a question on. Um, Definitely would support any new subscribers that you have as well. And just uh, stay tuned for more videos to come.